Good morning, church family. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ken Connaby. I'm one of the pastors here at First Methodist Houston, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for our online worship experience. As we enter into this time, I'm excited because we are continuing our sermon series about First Peter. And the message today is a message of hope. It's a message of significance. And in a time where Delta is now a reality for us and we are navigating again the trials of COVID, uh, I think it is perfectly timed by the Spirit that we dive into this. And so without further ado, I think um, one of the things that really captured me about this scripture was the way in which it describes Christ and the way it describes God's people. This is a really quick kind of summary, almost kind of a summary of what it means to be rooted in Christ and to be Christ's kingdom. And, and there's some beautiful imagery here, imagery here that I would like to dive into. So the first is, is it calls Christ the precious stone of God. The precious stone of God. And this is the cornerstone, right? This is the foundation of the church, but the, it's a precious stone. Earlier in chapter 1, as Peter is describing what it is to be rooted in Christ, in Christ's sacrifice, he mentions a couple of things. And one of the things he mentions is, is that the prophets, the people of God who were in the midst of being the people, speaking the word of God through the Spirit, were looking at the track record of God. And the two things that they saw was the word of God from the very beginning, before creation, right, spoke creation into existence, that word of God had been with the people. It's the word of God that commanded them to be the people of God, that gave them the law, that guided them to be a witness to the world. So they have this promise, this word of God that established a people that's been guiding creation to God's presence. The other thing that they see is the love of God throughout the history of the people, that the love of God has continually invited the people back into God's presence. No matter how they step away, no matter what they do, God's mercy and love is always abundant. It's abundant and invites them back to be the people of God again. And so the prophets, they take these two things and they look forward through the Spirit, pointing to a Messiah, pointing to the incarnation, the fullness of someone who would bring the fullness of God's word and God's love into this world. And that is Christ. That's what Peter is pointing us to. In Christ, we see the precious possession of God because Christ is God in himself. It is God's word and God's love incarnate in the world. And so the foundation of all that goes on, all that we are as a people of God, is founded on this precious stone of Christ. The second thing, is that God calls us in this scripture, God calls us his precious possession. His precious possession, that we are the possession of God. Not just owned by God, but cherished by God. The world likes to build their systems and the way of running this world on devaluing people's significance, taking away the significance of others that others might be elevated above them. It's a battle of who can be more important, who can be more powerful, who can be more wealthy. And your significance is tied to what you can produce, what you can control, the power that you can wield, the wealth that you can hoard. That is the way of the world. And so in order to do that, you have to take away significance from someone else. This letter is being written to a people who are on the bottom of that world. A people who are suffering, a people who are going through hard times, they're going through trials. The world is telling them that they have no significance, that they are worth persecuting, they are worth having suffer for the sake of the Roman Empire. These people are not valued as equal to other people. But in Christ, in the cornerstone, in the cherished cornerstone of Christ, they are given the true word of God. 
that they are significant. That there's nothing in this world that can say they are not significant because the creator of all things says that they are significant. There is no one more powerful. There is no one more loving. There is no one more abundant in power, in might, in sovereignty than God. And God says that they are significant. That they are a holy priesthood, a cherished nation, that they are a precious possession. This is the good news because in Christ, we have, we have the, the beauty stone of Christ that builds the foundation on which people find their significance. But this stone, this stone was rejected by the world. Even in Christ, the word and love of God, the world scorned and rejected that love and that will. And so even in Christ, we have someone who understands what it means to experience the hardship of the world, to endure it. But Christ, in his servanthood love, followed the will of God even to suffering, even to suffering death. That, that death was overcome by the power of God and that the hope of the people that 1 Peter is writing to is in the eternal hope of Christ, that Christ is doing a greater work, greater than anything the world could throw at God. They did their worst. They killed the Messiah. They tried to eliminate the word and love of God, but God was more powerful, defeated that. And we rest in the hope that God will fully restore this entire world, that God will be victorious. That's the message of hope that 1 Peter is trying to communicate to people who are suffering, people who are not seeing hope, people who are not feeling significant. And I have to, I have to confess that asking the question, where do I find my significance, is a difficult question to ask. Because that cornerstone, the one that is rejected, is either a stumbling block or our salvation. That's what the scripture tells us. It's either a stumbling block or our salvation or our hope. The truth is, is we as people here and now seek our significance in a multitude of things. We, we seek our significance in what we can accomplish, what we can do. We, tr we treat our significance based on people's opinions of us, our popularity. We treat our significance on what we're able to provide and build our own little empires. There are many ways that tempt us into having our significance rooted in that thing. And it is difficult, it is humbling to put our significance in something that is beyond our control because we want to be in control. But Christ, the servant king, calls us to put our hope in God's promise and word that God, no matter what is happening around us, is leading us to something beautiful, something wonderful, something full of peace, mercy, grace, love. And that that is not necessarily subject to just our lifetime. That this has been a long journey of history. That we are only a part of that story. And so our call is to build our foundation on that promise, on that hope, on that love. Because we are also living stones. We are a part of God's plan God spoke significance to us through his love, but he also calls us to be that significance in the world. This is not just an idle hope, but one that lives in a testimony of witness, that lives built on the foundation of what we have seen and been guided to in Christ, to be that for our neighbor, to be a source of love and compassion for those around us, even when suffering abounds, pointing to our future hope pointing to the full restoration of creation, our lives and the world around us. What follows this passage is 1 Peter tries to kind of challenge people to live a life as foreigners in a foreign land, to realize that they are people of God in the world 
and that in many ways that makes them foreigner, in many ways that's going to put them at odds with the world. And the truth is, is as people of God, people who root ourselves in this cornerstone, who follow the Creator, who follow Christ, we will not always fully be at home in the world. We are foreigners in it, and it's going to put us at odds with the world because God's love, justice, and mercy call us to be something radically different than what the world builds. But we are called to do that with servants' hearts. Servants' hearts. What's gonna, what we're about to go into is kind of what they call a household code, and it's a very highly kind of debated thing, especially within theology on how relevant household code is today. But what I take away from these codes, this way of calling us to live, and what Pete, First Peter is trying to tell the people is to live as an abundant witness of grace, mercy, and love as much as you can, whatever your context. We are going to be struggling with that throughout the life of the church in all different ways. We as Christians are around the world in different nations, in different languages, in different cultures, in different systems of government. It will always be a part of what it means to be in the church. But what we are continually called to is to be the living stones built on the foundation of Christ, to be a relevant witness and presence of peace, love, and mercy in all things. And that comes from the abundance of significance that has been spoken to us first. That no matter what we do, it's not a product result, right? It's not about, he's not writing saying, if you are faithful, then you will conquer or you will be popular. Our significance doesn't come from the witness itself. The significance comes from God's spoken word to us. That what we do may or may not be accepted by the people around us. That is not our job. Our job is not to force people to accept the love and mercy that we are trying to show the world, but to be a continual presence of it, a witness to it, a beacon of hope. And that is rooted only in the Word of God saying, I love you. You are my precious possession. I have loved you from the very beginning. I will always love you. There is nothing that will separate you from me. I will continue to show you love and mercy continue to show you the way in which I called you to be, and I will be that in abundance from now until eternity. That is our hope. And so we gather in worship to remind ourselves of that significance, to remind ourselves that it is the love of God that drives all that we do, that we have been called a precious possession, a holy nation, a loved people. And from that, we march forward from age to age, from generation to generation, partnering with the eternal work of Christ. And that is the foundation and the wall that builds the kingdom, builds a kingdom beyond our understanding until we all meet, all meet together and celebrating the full construction of God's word, God's desire, God's wisdom in this world. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that in all things that, Lord, through your precious self, Lord, that you call us cherished, that you call us loved, God, that we are your possession, your special possession. God, in all the ways that, Lord, we have failed, Lord, we lay before you because we know that your mercy and your grace are abundant. Lord, continue to lead us into places where we encounter your mercy and your love and your spirit. Lord, that it might well up in us and that we might be a beacon of hope to our families, to our neighbors, to the world. Continue to give us strength in all seasons. We give you this time, we give you our lives, and it is in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.